Today we're going to take a look at how we can use probability to make predictions. Please be sure to copy down the examples as we go and take any notes that you find helpful. Okay, in front of us we have uh, seven different blocks and I want to know um, if we randomly choose one of the letters out of that pile, what's the theoretical probability that we'll pick a vowel? All right, well, when we're talking about theoretical probability, remember, we're just kind of talking about the chances that something's going to happen. We didn't actually do it yet. So uh, we, if you look up at the top here, you can see that um, we want to take our the outcomes that we're looking for, right, the vowels in this case, and we want to see how many there are, and then we want to figure out how many total possible outcomes that would be out of. So I know my vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. So up top, I've got an E an O, and another E. So I have three, I'm going to do probability of picking a vowel, is, well, we have three vowels out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total um, possible outcomes. So we have a three-sevenths uh, chance of picking a vowel. Now remember, I could turn that into a percentage as well by doing three divided by seven, and then times 100, um, that would be about, it's not a nice one, it's about 42.9% if I round it. Right now I'll just stick with the fraction though, that's going to be helpful for us for what we're going to do next. Okay, because now we're going to use that to make a prediction. Say, if we were to draw a letter 91 times, how many times would we expect to pick a vowel? Well, we know that the probability of getting a vowel is 3 out of 7 right, based on what we have up above here. So I might even put on here like three vowel, um, just as a reminder to myself um, that that's the vowels on top and the total on bottom. All right, we want to know out of 91 times. Well, we could set up a probability here, or uh, sorry, set up a proportion here and say, well, if uh, three times we pick a vowel out of seven total, we want to know how many total vowels out of 91 times. Um, so we can cross multiply to solve. So if I do 3 times 91 divided by 7, I end up finding out that that would be 39 times we would expect to pick a vowel if we drew 91 total. We found 3 sevenths of 91. That's another way we can do it, and I'll show you that on the next example. All right, let's take a look at another one. The theoretical probability that you randomly choose a green marble from a bag is 3 eighths. I'm just going to kind of jot that down. Probability of green equals 3 eighths. Okay, there are 40 marbles in the bag. We want to know how many are green. All right, well, we'll use our theoretical probability um, to make a prediction here. So we figured out, or we're told, that 3 out of every 8 marbles are green, okay, and we want to know how many green there would be out of 40 marbles. And so you might find it helpful like I do. I like to put a little label on top, three green out of eight total, and then we're looking for how many green out of 40 total. So now I can just cross multiply. I have three times 40 divided by 8, and I find out that there are going to be 15 green marbles out of those 40. Okay? That was one method. Another method is we could just multiply, right? If we know that there is a 3 eighths probability um, of there being a green marble, and there's 40 marbles, we're really finding 3 eighths of 40. Or we know that of in this... Um, used in this context means that we're multiplying. So 3 eighths times 40. And I'm going to quick put 40 as 40 over 1. And I can multiply across here. I could have simplified first and then multiplied, but I end up with 120 eighths, uh, which simplifies also to 15 greens. Okay. And another method we could have used is we could have taken 3 eighths and turned it into a percentage, and that would be about 37.5%, and then we could find 37.5% of 40 um, using any one of the methods that we know, and we would still end up with 15 green marbles. 
you have a spinner divided into five equal sections. Two of the sections are green. If you spin the spinner 120 times, how many times would you expect to get green? Okay, well, I'm going to kind of picture this here. I've got a spinner that's divided into five sections. So I'm just going to kind of draw a sketch. That can be really helpful. And one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so here's my spinner divided into five equal sections, and it's telling us that two are green. All right, so now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, I've got a two-fifths probability or two-fifths chance of spinning green if I just spun that spinner. Okay, so first we had to find that probability. And then we want to know if you spun it 120 times, how many times would you expect to get green? Well, we have uh, a two, I'm going to show you two methods here. So we have a two-fifths chance of green. So two out of every five are green. And we want to spin it 120 total times. So again, if the label helps, you can do like two green out of five total, and then x green out of 120 total. That might help you set it up. Um, and then you're doing two times 120 divided by five to figure out that there would be um, 48 greens expected if you spun it 120 times. Okay, so we set our probability um, up in a proportion um, based on our what we were trying to predict. Okay, another method that we could use is we could turn it into a percent, right? If we have two-fifths green, which we already figured out, uh, we could write that as a percentage, right? Top divided by bottom times 100, so 2 divided by 5 times 100 is 40%. So we have a 40% chance of spinning green, and we're spinning it 120 times. So we're trying to find 40% of 120. Now you can set up a proportion, or you could just do a multiplication, uh, but 40% is written as a decimal, 0.4 of means multiply. So 40% of 120 is 0 0.4 times 120. And just to confirm, when I do that, I do get 48. So another way to get to that same answer, that you're going to have 48 greens. If the Hunger Games were played 84 times, about how many times would you expect a tribute from District 3 to win? All right, first, what is the theoretical probability that someone from District 3 will win? And then let's set up a proportion or multiply to answer the question. Okay, so we know from the Hunger Games that there are 12 districts, and each district has two people. So that is a total of 24 tributes for our possible outcomes, okay? And so District 3 is sending how many people? Two, right? So there are two people from District 3 out of the 24 tributes. So we're going to say we have a 2 out of 24 um, probability, or that's 1 12th. Um, let's turn it into, is it a nice decimal? No. Um, we'll just keep it as 1 12th. So we have a 1 12th chance that someone from District 3 will win. All right, so now we want to set up a proportion or multiply to figure out um, if they played it 84 times, how many times would we expect somebody from District 3 to win? Well, if someone from, if the probability of someone from District 3, I'm just going to kind of write this out here, is 1 12th, and we want to do it 84 times, then I'm looking for 1 12th of 84 or 1 12th times 84. And so I can do 84 divided by 12 here. Actually here, let's do this. I have 84 over 12, which equals 7. So um, if I just multiply here, I can see that we would expect them to win 7 times. Or I could have set up a proportion. All right, so 1 out of every 12 times, we expect someone from District 3 to win. So out of 84 times, how many times would we expect them to win? And so again, I can do 1 times 84 divided by 12, and I end up with 
x equals 7. So I just want to answer that question of how many times would we expect them to win. We would expect them to win 7 times. If you have any questions, please write them down and talk with your teacher tomorrow. Thanks for watching.